Hi, it's me again, Ron. We're going to do a, a handover on the Auto Trail Scout model. Um, so first of all, we'll start off with the hookup point, which is just underneath. One little trick you can put is you just put your foot underneath rather than trying to grip your fingers down the side. Just use your foot to help it up. It, it does make it a lot easier. The hookup point is just underneath here. And the only thing we would advise you to do is to hook your van up first then go to the power source rather than doing the opposite way then you're not walking around with a live lead okay so hook your van first adjacent to that to the right side is your leisure battery which is being charged as we speak there is room in there for another one so you normally fit another one if you're doing wild camping so okay. just underneath the point is your wastewater tap or your wastewater grey tap um, so if you're on site there'll be a designated grey water or wastewater disposal so you drive as close as you can to it turn the tap and then obviously ditch your, your grey water there okay um, next to that is obviously a little bit of storage wherever you want to put in there cables ramps wellington boots anything you wish and then to close just push down and then lock off so we're now coming to the cassette toilet which is behind here Toilets there. That's where you do your business, and this is where your business ends up. Okay, so when you're on site, there'll be a designated chemical toilet disposal. Usually, it's behind the toilet block. To release, just pull, up, pull it out. It seals itself. That's a cassette. Okay. Wheels on the back, extending handle, so you don't have to carry it. So you can just drag it to that disposal point. So you get there, lift it up, take the cap off. Then pour the contents down the receptacle or whatever it happens to be. Press the orange button, that lets a little bit of air in, stops the glug 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 sort of thing. Then you can rinse it out as many times as you want. Once, ten times, a hundred times, doesn't make any difference. When it's clean, leave approximately a half a litre of water in there. If you're using liquid chemical, you can use a tap, the cap as a measuring stick. So just approximately a cap full of chemical, pop that in there, tighten it up, close off and then just push the cassette straight back in there is lots of different products on the market now you can use the tablets or the liquid it doesn't make any difference okay once that's done that's ready for use so next we've got external shower okay when you buy the vehicle it would be with the vehicle a hose it's about a meter long with a bayonet fitting which slots into there on the other end is a shower head with a trigger so if you've got warm water or hot water in the boiler you can turn it so you can have a cool shower or a hot shower so if you just want to do your boots or your feet or if you want to wash down your bikes or the kids or the dogs it's a great piece of kit okay and that's all there is to it just below there you've got your fresh water drain okay it's a hundred litre tank on an auto trail uh, so there's, when it's full there's a hundred litres in there so if you're gonna if you have taken some contaminated water on board then obviously you can drain the freshwater tank from there okay the water intake is on the other side of the vehicle we'll go through that in a few minutes and then finally on this side is your side locker or garage or depending on what you want to call it and you can carry anything you want in there so you can put all your deck chairs in and camping things and a couple of kids dogs anything you want okay and they are obviously lockable the lock turn the handle Use the round headed key, quarter turn, give it a tap and that's it locked. To unlock, quarter turn and that's it unlocked. Thank you. It's uh, fresh water. So if you have your vehicle parked on your drive at home, then you're going to take water on board from there. So it's a hose pipe in, fill it in overflows or carry as much water as you want. Okay. Um, most people tend to just carry enough water until they get to their destination and then they'll fill up when they get to their campsite rather than driving around with a full tank of, uh, of fresh water because obviously that's a 100 litre tank so you're carrying an extra 100 litres of weight so basically just a couple of gallons till you get there okay so you're going to need some hose pipe some various connections usually the hose lock you can get them in most DIY shops because um, some sites you go to you just see a, a brass tap and you need the, the screw on connection and then the hose clip that side okay just adjacent to that is an external barbecue point which you get with the vehicle basically it's bright red 
with a brass spigot sticking out and then you'd have a meter of hose connected to it and if you have a freestanding barbecue you can connect it to that so you can have a barbecue outside um, providing you have gas on board then next to that is your boiler is behind there and that's your Truma vent if you're going to heat your water using gas you must take this cover off to take the cover off a little bit of pressure with your thumb and then just peel it off okay because the boiler actually needs a circulation of air for it to operate if you forget to take this cover off and you switch the boiler on after about 30 seconds it will just automatically switch itself off okay but you must take this off if you're going to heat your water using gas if you're using an electric then it doesn't matter you can leave it on okay I'll just pop that back on in a late one of this. So, side locker or the LPG gas locker, okay, liquid petroleum gas. The catch for this particular model is just inside. Just pull the lever, it unlocks. Some of the vans have similar locks to the garage doors. You may have one here and one here. Similar sort of thing, it's just a different uh, locking system. So, inside, you've got in the middle what we call a pigtail, which is a connector to the gas bottle so you're going to need some gas bottles or at least one and uh, normally you would have two gas bottles the main thing to remember is when you connect to the gas bottles that it's a left hand thread so you need a spanner or a shifting wrench so a left hand thread tighten it up turn the gas bottle on and then press this green button press that at least once because now there's a valve inside of here so if there was an accident and that pipe was severed that valve kicks in and it stops the flow of gas from the gas bottle. There's room on there for two bottles, either two sixes or you could have a 13 kilogram or a six kilogram to tell you up to yourself. Um, there's various outlets, most campsites have gas on board. We supply the gas as well so when you pick up your vehicle we can arrange to have a gas bottle fitted to your vehicle before you take it away. Okay and basically that's it, you would get a better demonstration on the day. Okay. okay we're now inside the vehicle so now the first thing we'll go through is the control panel which is above the habitation door on this particular vehicle so obviously you can see it's now switched off so i'm going to switch it on top left hand corner switch on that's what you do if you enter the vehicle and you just do the reverse of that when you're leaving the vehicle okay so if you're going for a walk or going to the local pub or a restaurant that's how you'd switch everything off so you just switch everything off that way come back after a nice meal or wherever and then switch everything back on so like i said the top left hand corner is the on off switch middle button is your tap so that's for your pump so that services your taps in your kitchen your washroom and your toilet flush the next one to that, the last one, is your lights, which is mainly all your down lights. All the rest of the lights are all individually switched. Okay. Next one on the left is your awning light outside. Okay, that's all that is. Then the next one is a dimmer light. It, this is the ones in the back lounge on this particular model. But if you press and hold, the lights will dim up. If you press it again, they will dim down. It depends on the model and the layout of the vehicle. It may, the, the dimmer switch may be at the back or it may be in the dining area at the front. Okay. And then next, if you're going to do a bit of wild camping, hopefully a lot of people try, try to do that. If you flatten your leisure battery, just importantly enough, a, a fully charged leisure battery will last approximately two and a half to three days without hookup. So if you did happen to flatten the leisure battery, then you can transfer the power from the leisure battery to the engine battery by pressing that button. So we're now actually using the vehicle battery. You can, sometimes you can hear it in the background, it click. Uh, so we're, up, we're operating from the vehicle, okay? So you can keep an eye on the voltage. Obviously you don't want the voltage to go much lower than about 11 and a half volts. Uh, but in this particular model, when it does sense the voltage has gone down, it will automatically switch itself off so you won't wake up in the morning with a flat engine battery. So for this experiment, I'm going to return it back to leisure. As you can see, you've got the leisure on that side. And then finally on the bottom, um, some vehicles, it's an optional extra, they have uh, elements inside the freshwater tank 
and the wastewater tank and basically the, the heat the water up so it's just above freezing you would only use those in the winter time sort of january february and it stops the like i said the water from freezing in your freshwater tank in your wastewater tank and to do that you just switch them on okay but like i said but in this particular model it's an optional extra so we'll go through the control panel itself so i'm going to start from the beginning so just scroll through so that's your main logo of the auto trail so on the top left hand corner you have an external temperature there's a little flash just there that's telling me that we're actually hooked up okay middle one is your clock 11:29 at this particular time and then in the top right hand corner you've got 21.4 which is the internal temperature on the bottom line is just the make and model of this particular control panel to go through the menu you can use the up arrow or the down arrow it doesn't make any difference which way you go for this experiment we'll just go down we'll go down over this is the main one you're going to be using most of the time because that's all the information that you need for just general use is there so vehicle battery the voltage leisure battery the voltage tells you right on the top of that accurately or you can see it visually 14.1 on the leisure side fresh water we've got approximately half a tank of fresh water it's sort of yellowy color once it starts to drop it will go to amber and then it will turn red when it's full it'll be bright green it goes up in obviously in increments of 25 percent and then finally you've got your wastewater which is empty so it's vehicle battery leisure battery fresh water wastewater the next one if you want some more information is your leisure battery which is giving you the full voltage which is 14.1 with this being a brand new vehicle, it's not full, the actual leisure battery is not fully charged yet, but that would give you the amp hours which you have in the, via, uh, in the leisure battery. At the moment, it's 48% um, in the uh, amp hours in the leisure battery. Next one is solar panel. That is also is an optional extra, or it depends on the make and model of the vehicle. Some come as standard. Um, when you're hooked up, basically the solar panel goes to sleep. And then once you're not hooked up, the sensor will sense a drop in the voltage when the lights are turned on. And then that's when the solar panel will wake up basically and then start charging your leisure battery. Okay. And then next, next to that is your, um, your battery amps. So that's how much you're using. When you're not hooked up, it will be negative. And then when you're hooked up, obviously it's just stable because we're hooked up. We're going directly through the charger. Um, eventually that will rise okay but when you're not hooked up that will start dropping because obviously you're using the power from the leisure battery next menu is all your clocks so if you need to set the clocks on the vehicle I've already set it it's now 11 11 31 to go in just press the middle button it highlights it then you can use the up and down arrows to change the time so in this particular case it's 11 o'clock if you're happy with that press it again go into the minutes and you can adjust that for the minutes next is an alarm basically it's just an alarm clock so you have, if you have an early rise in the morning or if you're catching a ferry you can set that to normal alarm clock set it for 0700 once it reaches that time the control panel will just beep it'll go beep 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 somebody has to get up press one of the buttons that will switch it off it's actually off at the moment next uh, it's what's called the event timer there's two clocks here if we're going to imagine that you're on site, you're hooked up and you're going to go for a meal. If you set that for 10 o'clock, we'll say, at night, whatever light you leave on when you switch everything off as you leave the vehicle, at 10 o'clock all those lights will come back on. And then you can have this them staying on for, say, 30 minutes. So you set that clock for 10.30 and then at 10.30 the lights will switch off. So it's like a security thing or a welcoming home, okay? So you can set that between 12, uh, 12 hours. Uh, they're all off at the moment, as you can see. So we'll just leave that. And then you've got your clock there, which is obviously being set, which you can just leave on. Next menu is your back to the main menu. So like I said, you can go forwards or you can go backwards. Doesn't make any difference. You can't break them. So just play with them, enjoy the fun. But the main one is your first menu. Vehicle battery, leisure battery, fresh water, wastewater. That's all you need to know. Right, ready? So we'll try this Truma Ultra, sorry, Ultra Heat, um, which is the control for your fire. 
on the electric side okay so right at the very top you've got 2000 in the middle is off next one down 500 next one down a thousand so that's 2000 watts 500 watts and a thousand watts okay so if you're on site you paid your site fees so you're going to use their electricity if it's cold obviously um, so that's 2000 watts that you're actually drawing from the power source um, if you're on a smaller site like a CL site or if you go abroad maybe France where they're not as generous with their electricity you may have to turn the power down either to 500 or a thousand watts okay but for this experiment we'll leave it on 2000 so now we're getting 2000 watts to the back of the fire there's a huge element inside the back of the fire it's like the inside of a kettle uh, but a huge one at the back of the fire um, the inner dial is your thermostat control you can just hear the fire clicking on and off as I'm turning the dial so once the fire is nice and warm you can turn that down to sort of four or five and then the, the fire will switch itself off once it senses the on the, therm, on the thermistor which is of various and various vehicles but on this one it's on it's on the on the control panel um, it'll detect the temperature and then switch itself back on again and switch itself off and on okay so that's it one so on this particular control panel that is just a light switch if anybody's wondering what it is that's all it is next the truma boiler this is going to heat your water via gas okay so if you're not hooked up this is the one you would use so you can see on the top we've got 50 and in the middle is off and then the bottom is 70. so to switch on to 70 you do that you hear a click in the background so that's it fired up there's no, nothing to ignite there's no other buttons to press so the now that will heat your water up to 70 degrees you've probably just saw that little red light come on that will be one of two reasons one the first one you forgot to take the cover off that was showed outside or you ran out of gas in this particular instance we haven't got any gas on board so hence the reason the red light has come on so i'll just switch that off okay um if you just want warm water just for some hand washing then you save a little bit of gas then you can warm your water up to 50 degrees okay and like i said in the middle is off thank you so we'll do the fridge, fridge freezer in this particular model. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch it off altogether. So there's a button right on the left hand side. So now that is the fridge dead. Okay, so when you come on board or if you're starting from fresh, just press and hold. It goes through its, its own little mechanical scroll. Then we use the left hand button to decide on which power source we're going to use. As you can see at the moment, it's on mains electric because we're hooked up. The fridge, as you can just see, it always switches itself off. Not completely, it's to save power. So all you need to do is just press the button and it comes straight back on again. So if you press the other button, it's shot right across onto gas. It self-ignites. There's no pilot lights to light or anything like that. We'll probably find after a few seconds it will fail because we've got no gas on board. And then you would get a, a little message on the side here saying, uh, it's, I think it's number six and you look in your handbook and you check and you see you've just run out of the gas so to go back again so battery okay this is for when you're traveling so now we'll be getting a 12 volt source from your engine to your fridge keeps your fridge chilled until you get to your destination as you can see we've got a little mechanical scroll there um, with a spanner with number six so if you looked at your handbook and you looked scroll down looked at number six you see that the engine's not running as soon as you start the engine that will go off and you'll get a 12 volt from there press it again um, we've got A is for automatic so basically if you leave it on there the fridge will do it all itself so basically what will happen is as soon as you unhook it will and seeing you start your engine it will get a 12 volt source from your engine it'll do it automatically um, if you're not hooked up then it will go on to gas the only thing I must warn you is that if you've left your gas on accidentally and then you pull into a petrol station and if you have it on automatic then when you switch your engine off the fridge will look for a power source it won't find mains electric because you're not hooked up um, and you've just switched your engine off so it's not on 12 volt and it's going to find gas but you don't want it to ignite on gas in a petrol station so the fridge will wait 15 to 20 minutes before it actually ignites on gas 
but it will do that no matter where you are so if you've just pulled up in a lay-by or you're meeting some friends in the middle of a field somewhere it'll still wait 15 to 20 minutes before it ignites on gas but you can override it so all you need to do is just press the button move it along to the gas symbol and it will ignite on gas manually that way and then you can just put it back once you're hooked up onto A for automatic okay for your temperature control uh, one dob I will say is the warmest and then press and it's two three four five and that's the coldest setting so if you start off round about three then you can go up or down when you get your destination and then finally the last button on the end there's an element there it's off at the moment but basically when you open the freezer there's an element which runs around the edge of the freezer this is to stop the over freeze so to stop the frost from coming out of the fridge you'd only use that mainly if you're, if you're going to be hooked up for a long time and your fridge is going to be on a long time so basically that will be off okay and then that's your fridge and that's it thank you so three two one so now we're going to the ultra heat or the fire okay we've already talked about the control panel which is above the habitation door on the electric side as i said before it's dual fuel okay uh, so you can use both mains electric or gas or both when you use it on mains electric it's two kilowatt which would be two thousand watts there when it's on gas it's three kilowatt and if you're using them both obviously that's a total of five kilowatt which is a huge amount of power uh, most homes or domestic fires at home don't even use that much usually they're about 3.3 or 3.4 um, so for the gas side it's the dial on the extreme right at the top of the fire it's on zero so all you need to do is turn it around to approximately five press that will ignite the pilot light okay and then when you hear that light then you'd release it and then the fire would ignite okay and then you can adjust the heat on the dial on top of the fire when the when it's on the electric side or the gas side when the fan is not on the heat is just convected out the front of the fire okay if you want to circulate the air around the vents around the vehicle then you go on to the fan which is this dial here just remember this dial is just a 12 volt fan that's all it is just a 12 volt fan nothing more in the moment it's off the first thing you would come to is M. M is for manual, so you turn it down to M for manual. Then at the top of the dial, you would turn that to five. You can hear the fan now. Basically what's happening now is, is the air is being pushed in here. It goes over that element, it warms up, and then it's distributed through the vents around the vehicle. There's usually a couple at the back there, near the front, and there's always one in the washroom, okay? It's exactly the same on the gas side or both. When it's on the gas side, instead of going over the element, element it's going over the firebox, okay, which is a con complete sealed unit. So even if it's on a windy day and you, you get a draft coming down the chimney, sometimes you'll hear the fire sort of like coughing and fluffy. So you hear, <laughs> don't worry, there's no gas or fumes can enter into the habitation side. It's a completely safe unit. So you can use these through the night on the gas side, okay. Um, going back to the fan, A is for automatic, okay, so what you would do, you would turn the control panel down, so if it's on the gas side, you turn it down to about one, one and a half, if it's on the electric side, maybe a thousand watts or just um, uh, 500 watts, and then turn the fan right down to one or two, and then the fire will just switch itself on and off through the night and just keep the van nice and warm and toasty, okay, and then finally, if it's warm, if we ever get a nice summer, hopefully we'll get one next year. If the van is warm and you just want to circulate the air, just put the fan on. So basically that will be just sucking in the air here. The fire would not be on because it's summertime. And then the air will be distributed through the vents and it just gives a nice easy effect and it just cools the van down. It's not an air con, but it just feels a little bit more comfortable. Okay, and that's your fire. Thank you. So come to the, the heart of the vehicle, as I would call it, which is the your charger, which is the EC500. Okay. Um, if you need to, a reference for any parts for your vehicle internally, if you quote the Auto Trail, your build number, um, which in this case is 155711, if you quote that number, they will know exactly which vehicle it is. Okay. So we'll get back to this control unit here. Um, so on the right side is your mains 
230 volt and on the left side is your 12 volt. So we'll talk about the main side on this one. So basically you split it straight down the middle. So you've got three buttons on the top there, underneath water heater, space heater and charger. You can switch them off if you wish, but as you can see, you need them on for the charge your leisure battery. You need the next one for your space heater, which is the main control for the fire, which we talked about briefly before. And finally, if you're going to heat your water uh, via electric, you need that one also. There would be a switch near the boiler, which you have to switch on. That's sending the signal to that switch, so you can heat your water electrically. Okay. And just below that is your main consumer unit, which is your trips. Um, that's the yellow button there. You can trip them out now and again, so you can trip it out. Just test it. It's worth testing it now and again when you're on site. And then to reset, just pop it back up again. Um, just above there, you've got reverse polarity. Auto trails are the only one that give you a, a visual reference to it. If you are receiving a reverse polarity, basically what it is, it's the brown wire and the blue wire, which are reversed. That light will illuminate. Okay. Um, I've talked to the electricians and they say, because Auto Trail is the only ones who have this unit, if you, if you didn't, you would be none the wiser. You would still be getting your electric, but most people tend to carry an extra cable when you're going abroad. I've been abroad many, many times um, and I've never experienced it myself. So I think they're going to phase this out eventually. So then going on to the left side, which is your 12 volt side. You look at these switches here, basically those are exactly the same as the ones above the habitation door. Okay, so you've got your on off switch, your pump for your taps, all your down lights, and if you want to transfer your battery from leisure battery to vehicle battery. And just below that you've got all your fuses, they're all 12 volt fuses. If you go to Halfads you can get a bag of assorted ones, 10 amp, 20 amp, 5, and just keep them in there. Okay, and then finally you've got your system shutdown. This is the button you would use if you're not using your vehicle. So we'll say hypothetically over the Christmas period, if you're not going to use your van for a month or two or longer, then you need to shut the system down. And this will protect your leisure battery because this will stop any drain on your leisure battery. Because some people do tend to need lights on now and again. And even the chargers themselves, because they're smart chargers, even though everything's switched off, they're still active inside. Okay. So over the winter time, or if it goes into storage, just remember to switch everything off, unhook obviously, and then switch off the system. And then that will protect your leisure batteries. Okay, and that's about it on that. Three, two, one. So we're now into the kitchen area. As you can see, we've got the stove or the cooker, um, three burner hob and hot plate. You'd use the hot plate mainly if you can, when you're hooked up, because like I said, we use their electric. Uh, or you can still use the burners. Um, your grill, full grill on that side, obviously, and, and then a full size oven. The grill and the oven is gas, and at the bottom there we have a, um, a what we call something like a pan cupboard. But inside of there, you can see there's a couple of isolating taps in there. Basically, they're all in the open position when you pick the vehicle up. Um, they're only for the technicians. If anything goes wrong with your cooker or the fridge, we can isolate that part and take the part away and repair it or replace it. Um, as long as you remember to turn the gas off and on from the top of the gas bottle. That's all you need to do. Okay, and then just above that is your microwave, okay, which only works when you're hooked up. It's a normal domestic um, microwave. So that works when obviously when you're hooked up. And then the rest is basically self-explanatory, so I won't waste your time. So we're now into the cab area. Um, I'm just going to briefly run through the basics of it. Uh, so the first button you would come to on your extreme right hand side on the dashboard is your mode button. So you press that one, once and you see the screen in the middle here. Uh, we've got a menu and then we we'll use the up and down arrows to scroll through the menu so that we'll go down over. So the first one you come to is speed beep. So you can set that that is for a speed, we'll say 70 miles an hour. And then when the vehicle reaches 70 miles an hour, it will give you an audible beep when you've reached that speed. You can set it at any speed. Next one, buzzer volume. So you can increase the volume of that beep that you hear. Um, next one, service. Um, so you can punch in a mileage next time for when your next service is due. So it'll give you an audible and a visual reminder when your next service is due. Passenger airbag. If you have a child seat on the passenger side, 
um, and you can disarm the airbag. Uh, it's active at the moment. And then your exit menu, the exit menu, just press and hold the button once, and then we're back to the main menu. As you can see, it's Tuesday, 13th of October, and the time and the temperature on the bottom left hand corner and it's zero miles because this is a brand new vehicle. On the end of the stalk on the wiper, if you press it once, you'll get range and if you wait a couple of seconds it'll give you how many miles you've got left in the tank. At the moment obviously the tank is empty but on a full tank you'll probably get about 500 miles. It's a 90 litre tank of uh, diesel to fill it. Uh, your trip distance A, just like a car so you can measure how far it was to A. Uh, your average consumption, so you can leave it on that, um, on this particular one, it was 5.6, which is not really right, so I'm going to reset that. To reset any of them, just press and hold the button on the end of the stalk, and then those are all reset. And then instant consumption, so you can leave it on that whilst driving, and it will give you a guesstimate on what your average consumption is. Um, average speed, what your average speed was over a trip. Next one, travel time, how long it took you to get there. Obviously it's 0, 0.00 minutes. And then you go on to trip distance B, which is exactly the same as A. So if you measure your way to a destination and you come back a different way, you can measure both to see which is the shortest or the longest. So that was 0 0.6 miles. So we'll reset that, just press and hold, and that'll reset it. Then we go to the distance B, exactly as A. Average consumption on the B, average speed on the B, and travel time, how long it took to get from there. And then we're back to the main menu. Tuesday the 30th of October, as I said, the 11 degrees and zero miles. On the right is your rev counter, temperature gauge, fuel, and uh, speedo. Um, on the left is your lights, sort of just a switch on and off, and then flash of the main lights and indicators. Just below that, um, is your cruise control to switch on just a quarter turn um, and then you'll see on the screen you've got cruise and in the bottom left hand corner you have a little green clock I don't know whether you can see that or not um, so it's now active once you get your desired speed you just get the lever and just push it forward and it will stick to that speed we'll say 60 miles an hour push it forward it'll stay at 60. if you're on the motorway and you start creeping up behind a wagon or something you want to overtake if you just push the lever forward the vehicle will accelerate if you bring it back towards you, it will slow down, or you can press the button on the end, that's resume, it will resume back to its original speed, we'll say it's 60 miles an hour. To switch off, obviously you just turn the dial. Then if you go to the opposite way, you have SLD connected, which is a limiter. As you can see on the screen there, right in the middle there, it's set at 30 miles an hour. So you can increase that, or decrease just by pushing the lever forward, it's going up to 37, 38, 38, 40. We can go right up to any speed if you hold it it goes up in fives so we'll say 70 so now the vehicle when that is switched on will not exceed 70 miles an hour okay or if you want, if you prefer you can drop it down to 65 or 60 and the vehicle will not increase to that speed as long as it's switched on when it says disconnected then you can travel at any speed okay which it is on the steering wheel itself um, you have for your radio you can do your mute and on the right hand side because the radio at the front has bluetooth so once that's connected to your phone you can scroll through all your telephone numbers your friends and family and when the phone rings just answer it this way and you can scroll through and um, answer your phones or you can call you can do it either ma manually or you can do it uh, verbally you can actually talk to the system it will talk back to you so if you have a friends and family we'll say example you want to phone jimmy at home just press and then you'd say phone Jimmy and it will find that number and dial that person or whoever it is. Then we're at the centre, we've got the radio, so we'll just press that, we'll switch it on. Obviously it's Fiat, as you can see. Um, it's connecting, so we'll accept that. And then we're on to the radio. To change channels, just press the side button, it'll find the channel if you want to um, memorize that channel where it says hold and set just press and hold and it'll memorize that on the classic there's only three along the top but if you want to memorize some more channels you press all go into that and you've got a choice of at least nine plus the three you've got so that's 12 channels you can um, memorize X button takes you back in ok 
speaker, obviously you've got your volume control. On the bottom here you've got your buttons, radio, media, sat nav, phone and more. We've just done the radio, so we'll go into media. There's no device connected, so if you had an iPad or a phone and you had some information or music or no CD, there's a connection just underneath here for your USB uh, cables, would we'll connect on, underneath there. Next is your sat nav, okay, so you press navigate to, you can press in home if you wish, and then you can type in your, um, your postcode, what would recommend you don't put your postcode in for obvious reasons, because if your vehicle was stolen, they know exactly where you live, and uh, we usually sort of say, do the next street, okay. Um, next is your phone, so there's no phone connected at the moment, but once you get the vehicle, you're just going to yes, and then you'd pair your phone to the unit. It would give you a pin, number, four digit. You'd punch that into your phone, and then you'd connect up to the vehicle. And finally, media, uh, sorry, more. So if you want to visually see the clock while it's driving, you can. Okay, switch that one off. Next one is compass. When the sat nav is on and it's, and it's found the satellites, you will get a compass on there so you can see which direction you're traveling in. And the next one is all your trips. So you've got your miles per hour, miles per gallon, and what have you on trip A and trip B. Okay. Um, and then we'll go back to radio. Next one in the top right hand corner, you've got a little cog. So that's your settings. So you go into that. And then you've got your display, voice commands, clock and date, safety, assistance, and what, what have you. So we'll go into the clock. So setting the times, set the time format. So you can set the channel, just use the up and down arrows to change the time, okay? And then the minutes, and if you're happy with that, then you go into done. And then you can go into the date, set the date exactly the same, which is the 13th, but at the end of the month, you need to change the date. Or at the end of the year, go into, sorry, you'd go into 16. So you have to physically change that. So we'll put the date back on there, and that's done. And we'll go back in, and then when you're happy with that, you just come out. Your reverse camera, so when you put it into reverse, that's your picture. And if you look just on the bottom there, you can see the, the bottom bumper. That little bit there is your spare wheel. So you do have quite a good view uh, when reversing. A lot of people do ask if they can have it on permanently as a rear view. Sadly, you can't. When you come out of gear, it pops out that way. Then the rest is just self-explanatory. Basically, you've got your heating controls, um, middle, so, um, air con, you need the fan on at least one for the air con to work. If it's not, it will switch off. Okay. And then finally on the bottom here, the first button you come to is heated mirrors, just the top ones. Once you're all settled in and all your blinds are in, you lock yourselves in, and obviously you've got your hazards there. That button there, most of the trails have got this button. It's mainly for the automatics. All it is is, it is an assist when you're pulling up to a, a bank and it stops the vehicle from rolling back. The next one is a traction control, which is not a diff lock, but if you're on wet grass, apparently, it, according to the mechanics, they say it softens the clutch, so it stops the wheel spin. So it does help you pulling off wet or slippery grass. We'd only use that if you're on that. And then that's it, basically. We'll go through more details when you purchase a vehicle. Um, so good luck and thank you very much for watching.